Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Peter and this is Gemma and we're from that little island over to the east of the big one. <laughs> Which now I see why Justin said bring a small bring, bring a small stretch. Um, we're from New Zealand, uh, Wellington based. Uh, I fell into Civi CRM, I think is a fair description. Um, in 2006 or seven, when I was proposing to my then employer that they should be using a Microsoft solution, and this slightly dreadlocked young fellow came along and pointed out that since the Green Party had a policy for open source, why weren't they considering using an open source solution? The party, in their wisdom, chose CBCRM. By a stroke of luck, Lobo, who was effectively the founder and major builder and donor, I believe, of CBCRM way back, happened to be living in Nelson at the time. So the next morning, Chris and I were around at his door knocking, saying, what have we let ourselves in for? <laughs> so that's um, we've been working with CBCRM pretty well since then, almost exclusively in Drupal. So I'm really glad we just had that presentation on Webform because uh, we tend to be a little oh, um, one-eyed around, uh, around how good Drupal is with Civi and how much more it can give than Civi by itself gives. So it's really good to see what's happening there. Um, I don't think I need to say any more other than Jim is going to do the presentation number one. Yep. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, with this first presentation, I guess, yeah, following on from what Justin, this is kind of how to use Webforms in Drupal and also extending on that, um, how to pull your information back out of Civi um, to extend the kind of reporting functionalities that already exist in Civi using Drupal views. Uh, so just we'll go over who I am and then why we go with Webforms, why you might want to use views, and then what you can get when you combine Webforms and views. So as mentioned, I'm Gemma. I work for Fusion. I'm not a developer. So I like to spend all my time kind of using Civi and the um, functionalities in Drupal to provide as much as possible to the client without having to do code customizations. If, if I run out of you know, functionality and I can't do something or it doesn't come out of the box, then I go talk to, the, to our developers. But as much as possible, I try and do things out of the box and that's where um, web forms and views come in really handy. So why web forms? Uh, Civi provides profiles, they provi it provides kind of default event contribution and membership forms, um, and it provides you the interfaces to update contact records, create activities, cases. But what if you want to have two people or one person sign up for multiple events within the same action? Have someone, you know, create a student, connect them to their caregiver, um, and trigger an event for that child to then meet with a um, provider as part of the organisation. Um, and then also just make the creating a contact a lot easier for those who may be a tech timid or, you know, you've got volunteers that don't often get into Civi and so don't get the training. So forms can make life a lot easier for them. Clear out anything you don't need um, and just do everything that you do need. So what Webforms provide, um, some of the kind of key things Webforms can provide, you can do everything on one form, um, create relationships, sign up for events, multiple events, um, sign up for memberships, trigger activities, all within one, completing one form. Whereas in Civi, you'd have to do each of those actions independently. Um, you get the fields pre-populating, you can use conditionals, so you know, if they fill out this field, then you want to open up all the other fields. Um, but if then, you know, the organisation, not the individual, then you don't need to collect some fields. So it just keeps the forms cleaner. Um, it triggers web forms on submission, so you can send web form uh, emails on submission. So you can send emails to, you know, your organiser to say somebody signed up for the event, or you can send an email back to them. You can split your web forms over multiple pages. You can add formulas. 
you can do um, field validation and on submission of the form you can kind of send them to whichever Drupal page uh, or any page you might want. Um, so getting started with Webform, um, well you have to have a front face of Drupal um, and then all you need is the Webform CVCRM module. Then in your Webform you get um, this extra tab, CVCRM, when you create a Webform, um, enable CV processing and suddenly you've got all these um, options and fields that you can add. And you just tick the boxes of the fields that you want included, click how many contacts you want, um, yeah, and kind of select. As you can see, you've got activities, event registration, memberships, um, your case management's in there as well. So you just pick all the fields that you might need, um, and then it'll start building the web form. So a simple web form, um, this one's creating an activity that has um, the contact and someone who's got to approve um, the email. So, you know, we've got activity fields, we've got contact um, <coughs> fields connected, and that's your, you know, view of the web form and that's what it looks like um, on the CV tab. Um, a more complicated form, this one's you're signing up multiple people, so um, you select how many people you get um, that number of um, different registrations. So on this page, when you scroll down, you get your registration and you get registration for user two, registration for um, person three. Um, you can connect the payment processor through to it. You can sign them up for whichever of the events you've connected in through there. And I'm not going to show you how to do all these things um, because that would take a day or so. Um, but we'll just look at, you know, what can be done um, and then, you know, it's up to you to kind of play, explore and um, ask questions. So um, you can pre-populate the fields. So, you know, that contact in the previous form, um, so in this form, contact two is kind of set within the um, web form settings that it's always going to be um, Professor Mark. In this one, um, that's me, I'm logged in, so it's automatically pre-filling the first registration to be the logged in user, and it will fill in any of those fields that you already have data in CV. So you're saving your contact having to type in their email address again, type in their, um, any information you've already got for them will be there, um, but they can change it. So if they've got an address in there that, you know, they see is incorrect, they just change it and that'll update it in CV. Um, you can also, um, with those contact fields, if it's not pre-filled, you start typing, it can give you the options of um, any contact from your CV database, and you can <coughs> limit that to, you know, having it only show anybody in, you know, the organizer's group or something. Um, and the other thing is you can pre-fill these details from the URL. So um, we'll see when we combine views and web forms. If you, you can follow a link, it might have the <coughs> contact IDs in there, it might have the activities, and so it will connect with existing contacts and activities in that system. Um, the other thing is the fields in the forms can be public and kind of as a normal field. You can have disabled fields which show the information but you can't edit it. So if you want to show somebody information but not actually let them edit it, or you can have it private so you want to feed information through to the email but not actually let the um, just the person who's filling in the form see that information then you can hide those fields as well um, so conditionals this is you know so you can set that the fields don't show or do show based on um, a previous field so in this case you know if you put self you get 
individual details to fill in. If you pick organiser, you get organisation details. And if I fill in the target contact, um, it pops up with another target contact, so I can hit up to four target contacts in this form. That's what your conditionals page looks like. Um, emails, you can send emails to just, you know, just set the email address you want to set, or you can send it to a component from the field. So you could pull in, or you know, you could get them to enter their email address and you could then send it to that email, or you can pull in a component that might not be connected to an email, for this example, main industry, and then based on the option that they've picked, you could send it to a different person. So if you, you're asking them to register interest for something, you can then trigger the email to go to whoever in your team is connected to that um, area. So that's kind of a brief overlook at web forms um, and what web forms can do. And now views is more about kind of looking at the information com um, coming out of CIVI. So CIVI provides reports and there are also extensions like the extended report to add further functionality to the reports. Um, and you've also got advanced search and smart groups to try and help you kind of collect some of that data that's in CIVI. But they all have, you know, they're all good for delivering some outcomes and views provides another way of pulling that information out in a very customizable form. Um, so for example, if you want to have a page where your regional coordinator who's you know, a logged in user with a role of regional coordinator can see all the tasks associated with the people in their area, who they're assigned and uh, who those tasks are assigned to, that can be done in views. If you um, want to show all the contact people for schools and then show the region and area and district that those schools are part of, you can show that and you can also have filters to break that down um, so you can show, you know, people can enter the, you know, enter into the view and limit, limit it to show them just one area or just one district. So that's kind of, there's, there's kind of endless scenarios where views can become useful. Um, so what views can provide, uh, flexibility, so if there's a connection between your two fields within the CIVI database, like if you can make the connections through the, um, through the different sheets, through the different tables in the database, then you can probably do it in views. Views effectively creates an SQL query without you having to know SQL. It's a, yeah, it's a, I want to say friendly, you know, there's lots and lots of options within views, um, but once you learn it, you know, you can do it all via the user interface. Um, so there's lots of display options. You can get your information displaying in tables, lists, charts, maps, um, and then, you know, and then those displays can be shown um, as pages in Drupal or as blocks that show on, you know, all your pages or just some of your pages. Um, you can control results based on the logged in user. Um, you can also run bulk operations um, from views. You can put views inside views, so sometimes connecting um, all the information in one stream is quite difficult, but you can you know, collect a lot of information and then pull in another view that filters based on a field in that row. And I'll show you some examples later. And then if you feel like needing to add code, there are PHP fields as well to start doing some of that kind of extra calculations or whatever you need to do to create kind of more customised results. Um, so getting with started with views, it comes with Drupal. Um, and the biggest challenge usually to kind of setting up your view <coughs> is working out whereabouts in Civi you want to start. So when you create a view, you um, have to pick kind of what fields you're starting with. Um, and some of the most useful ones that we found 
Um, Civic so context, if you want to start with a context. Um, activities, if activities are kind of the key result you're trying to show, um, contributions are kind of some of the key ones we use. You just have to kind of think your way through the logic of what you're trying to show and what the relationships are between those fields to work out where you want to start. That's often the most challenging part because if you pick the wrong place, then sometimes it's really hard to make all the connections. Um, but just as a note, if your Drupal and CVCRM databases are separate, then you just need to put some extra lines into your settings.php file so that um, Drupal can see, knows where to look for the CV tables. Um, so this is your views um, interface. The f you've got um, the format here, which is where you pick what it looks like, table, unformatted, list, map. Um, and then fields, and when you click add, that'll give you a list of all the fields that are automatically available um, based on where you've started. So that will give me, currently my view is based on contacts, so it will give you every field on a contact, all their address fields, um, that's all there automatically. Um, filter criterias give you all the same options as your fields, but using them as filters instead. And you can pick whether your filters are just happen in the background or whether they're exposed. And then relationships is the key to connecting bits of information. So if you've got a contact and then you want to pull in their activity information, or you've got a contact and you want to you know, you've got a child and you want to connect to the parent and show the parent's name, then you use a relationship to build that relationship between contact A and contact B, and then you'll be able to access all of contact B's information as well. So there's, there's lots of functionality in there, and sometimes it can be hard to kind of find the right route to get to the information, um, but if you can get through the information um, path in the database, then you should be able to get through it in views. The other benefit um, is that you can, you add all these fields and it gives you a kind of, um, so lower on the page, it will give you what the output is um, before you save it. So it'll show you a preview um, and then, you know, it's quite nice when you're, you know, trying to show, you know, find one more field, you try something, you break it, you just go cancel and it takes away those changes and takes you back to the last time you saved. So you can save, try things, cancel or save, depending on whether or not they work for you. Um, so that's how the kind of exposed filters come out. You can have them display how you like, depending on what the fields are. Um, some of the display options. So I've got a chart, um, a map, a table, um, this table has a calculation in it and totals. Um, it's grouping on provider. So there's yeah, there's lots of ways you can pull out that information. And you can have two pages that are showing exactly the same fields but different settings in order to see, you know, the table of results and then the chart so you can understand where the chart information is coming from. Um, using views on pages, so you can get your views out like as a block. So this here is a block built in views that's showing contact data. Um, this is another um, block built on activities. These are also blocks um, and they can sit, you know, on the side of within your kind of Drupal content or set in any of those block regions that exist in your theme. Um, so bulk operations, I guess one of the things is, you know, you found all the contacts you're interested in, you now want to do something. Maybe there's, you know, an activity in this situation where, you've, um, you know, you've got a whole lot of activities that you want to assign to a different volunteer to complete. So you just, you can select all these boxes and then you can assign the activity. And you can use these bulk operations 
to change activity status, assign them, put contacts in groups. There's a lot of functionality you can get there with the bulk operations. You still don't get you don't get all the functionality that you could get um, from say an advanced search in Civi, but more and more as people are using it, a kind of the more and more bulk operations are becoming available. Um, views inside views. So um, you know, we've got a line for the contact and then we pulled in another view that's listing the employers to show within that view. Um, and so you've got web forms which can help you kind of input data into Civi or update data in Civi. You've got views that um, can show you data from Civi. So between web forms, views and then probably some menu items, you can get to a um, user interface that, for some of your um, admin staff, maybe your volunteers, that doesn't require them entering and seeing the Civi interface at all. Which again is really useful if you've got people who perhaps don't don't interact with the system often, um, you know, might get really confused by all the excess fields that are available, you know, or you've got just one simple, you know, set of tasks or process that you want people to go through. Um, this has been, yeah, quite powerful for us in helping make it really user friendly. Um, yeah, and you can do it all without needing to be a developer, know a developer. Um, you can do it all through the user interface. So I guess when you combine them, um, links from Civi, uh, sorry, links, you can create links from views that go into forms, and you can either, you know, redirect to a new page that's a form, or um, there's also this modal forms which gives you a pop-up. So it pops up, complete it, submit it, and you get back to the view you were looking at. Um, and all that takes is a little, um, a little bit inside the link URL. Um, and this kind of C, ooh, CID1 equals ID, that's how you feed the information from the view into the web form. So that's kind of connecting, that's linking the contact whose record, you, you know, who's in the row that you click the link to, to get to their record rather than the next person down. Um, and it can also pull in activities, which is quite useful if you want to, you know, it is a specific activity that's connected to that record. Um, some more examples of views that we've created, again, with links to update, um, you know, reassign, do all sorts of activities. So this, there's just some yeah, more examples of views and how you could use them um, and how we use them. Can I just add, sorry, just on that, can you just pop back? So the screen that you're seeing there on the left, this one. Um, we haven't seen it nicely, but it is pretty much what you will get if you use Nation Builder. So we were asked by a client to get them off Nation Builder, but still give them an interface that was pure Nation Builder. And so we've done this building views, so each of those tabs, are, I mean, they're not, they're not themed as tabs, but basically <laughs> each of those are tabs, so if you click on contributions, you will see the chart of the contributions they've made, the list of the most recent contributions, so a, you know, a table chart of how much they've given over the last um, three years. If you click on address, then you would uh, see the list of their addresses with an edit button for each of those addresses that then jumps up a mobile form. So you can just change the address and close it and it's still back here. Um, and it, it's ridiculous how much work it can take to simplify a system. But we know that it makes it worthwhile for the users in the end because, as Gemma said, that you know it's it's liberating them from all of the other stuff and just allowing them to focus on the stuff they need to deal with. Yeah. So that's kind of my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask now or catch us at a break um, or get in touch. So questions? Yeah. Maybe you've got some good resources online for learning. Good question. Um, well, oh, for learning web form, 
Well, for, for views, um, on our site, we've got a menu item called Treasure Trove. Mm -hmm. And if you click on Treasure Trove, you'll find whenever we've gone, whether we've done it for a client or because we've done it um, on the Stack Exchange forums where we're forever trying to be helpful to other people um, who don't know their way around Civi. And somebody says, how can I build a view so that when my user logs in, they get a little block that shows them what their membership status is with a little link there that they can jump through to a page where they can then renew. And rather than explain it, we just build the views. We stick them in our treasure trove. They're there available as a downloaded CSV, uh, text file. And you can basically just grab that, jump into your views, import the view, and... In most cases, it will work unless there's some nuance about custom data that we were trying to demonstrate. So that's a good place to start. I mean, it's just there and it's free. Um, views is has a, quite a steep learning curve because there's just so many places. If we were to jump back to the... I, I'm not going to ask you to, but if we would... What I would ask you, can you jump back to... Um, one of oh, good one. Yeah, the YFNZ page that has the multiple uh, event yes. thing on, because I just don't think we kind of really clarified what was that. Um, so in terms of views, it's worth looking at some of the online tutorials that the Drupal, the Drupal community have built, and there's a lot of them for views. And you just have to kind of go, they're talking nodes, I'm thinking civi contacts. Or they're talking some other Drupal entity, and I need to be thinking civi activities or something. But the concept that you've got a section where you choose your fields, you've got a section where, you're, you, where you choose the filters that you want to apply behind the scenes and the filters that you want to give people to apply on the page. Um, it, th there's some really good tutorials uh, there and maybe we should put up a blog on our post or on civi after this to kind of say, look, if you want to get... If you want to start bending your head around um, views, then here are some good tutorials, even though they're all Drupal speak. If you, yeah, might be helpful. Um, cool. So we're actually on. This is your screen. I was hoping we could get to the actual form. Oh, you yeah. said the. You said the. I, I may have done. Um, there's just a couple of, of examples there that I think we can probably better explain by jumping into. I don't, I don't think we even had it open. Um, any other questions whilst Gemma tries to load that form up? So see the two arms or you're stretching to keep awake, sir. You're stretching to keep awake. <laughs> the joys of being in that after lunch spot. Yeah. Um, so whilst you're finding... You're finding one? No, that's the... Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. So, so what we're doing... Where no, are we? Where's the counter on it? Oh, I think you no, want... No, I think this is that old. Okay, so jump in. Oh, okay, so, so this is the old form before we put the counter on it to say I'm registering four or 12 or however many people. So what's happening here is that basically these people run a cluster of events. And the person who's registering, they may be registering themselves for five of the events, but they're registering their mother for just two of the events and they're registering their cousin for a different two of those events. So by the end of this form, it's not just that we've signed up the five people for the same set of three events, but we've signed up one person to these five, that person to one of those five and a different one, and a third person to a completely different two, and done all the pricing really simply. I mean, as I said, we, 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 we try to be code-free developers, um, mostly because there's no way we can touch our developers in terms of what they do. And then we're running a, a basically a formula, which again is all there exposed in the system, for you to go, right, well, the price is three of these plus two of those plus five of these. Here's how much you need to... Yeah, that's the one. Clone, clone P, I think. This one. No? Yeah, number. Number of people registering. So in theory, before we set the one, so this is conditionals, we wouldn't have seen anybody. If we put two, then we see two data sets, field sets, three field sets, and so on. Um... And we won't show you the conditionals because there's 70 running on this page. But again, they're all really easy. If you can, you know, if you can work out the order of what you need to do when you make a cup of tea, which is kind of my baseline for understanding how anything works logically, then you can work it out for this as well. Um, so anyway, I, I, I think I just wanted to 
So you've got, yeah, there's the first person, there's the second person and the third person. Um, another beautif beautiful thing within the web form component is that if you, if you say, right, I need to register or create activities or relationships for a whole set of people, you set up the first contact exactly as you want it, and then within the web form, you say clone that contact, clone that contact, clone that contact 30 times. Web form and Civi work beautifully together, and you end up with an ability to basically load 30 people all through one form to set them onto an activity or sign them up for an event or um, add in the feedback. If you've just had a, you know, you've run an event, people have filled out a feedback form and you want to get that data in there simply you can do it like that. Obviously, you could also do it through an import. Oh, look, it's my talk. Yeah, because I'm passing right. it to your time now. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's what I was hoping. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gemma.